Thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you want more of these videos, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. Also, I've got a giveaway today, and uh, I will tell you later in this video how you can get a couple copies of the Ducks Nebraska game program from Lincoln. Uh, even if you're a Duck fan and that is not a fond memory, it's a pretty cool thing. Oregon, Nebraska. I've got a couple of these. I'm going to give them away. I'll tell you later in the video how you can win those. Um, we're going to talk Oregon. We're going to talk Oregon State. We're going to talk a little bit of Portland State today, but I have to start with this two-point conversion thing. Mark Helfrich and the Ducks, the swinging gate. Um, I know you were slapping your forehead watching this game. I was in the press box at Memorial Stadium going, what are they doing? Why do they keep trying this? Charles Nelson with a jump pass, the swinging gate. It gets old in a hurry when you're not successful. The Ducks were one for five on those two-point attempts, and I know Mark Helfrich after the game said, look, this is Oregon, this is who we are, this is what we do, we're looking for a certain look there. And I would say back to Mark Helfrich that I get all that, that you're trying to be that Oregon program that Chip Kelly beat, that you're trying to have that innovation, you're trying to be fun, you're trying to look for competitive advantages, but if it's not successful and you're one for five on those two-point plays and you score five touchdowns and you don't end up with 35-plus points, I think you have to start asking yourself questions about, you know, should we reevaluate who we are? Should we reevaluate the swinging gate thing? And maybe if we get an 8-7 lead, do we just line up and kick the extra point after that now that we put pressure on Nebraska? So I think, you know, you can point to a number of ways in which Oregon lost this game. I'm not looking past the PATs, and I know you're not either, because I think that was a key breakdown of strategy that Mark Helfrich and his coaching staff suffered on Saturday at Memorial Stadium, and it bit him in the end. It absolutely bit him. And you saw Rich Brooks... Uh, the former Ducks coach uh, sending out a tweet late in this game. Oregon should have had a healthy lead late in this game and, and did not. And ultimately, Nebraska came back and got him. The penalties were uh, a horrible, horrible development for Oregon. 13 penalties, 126 yards. You had substitution penalties. You had holding penalties. You had penalties on the defense. You had penalties in the offense. You had personal fouls. Um, that has to stop. That stuff has to clean itself up. But it troubles me on a different level because it tells me that that attention to detail, that sloppiness that we saw on Saturday, um, that you know those are things that did not mark the Chip Kelly era Ducks programs. They were incredibly efficient. They played fast. They played efficiently. Uh, they did not kill themselves and shoot themselves in the foot like the Ducks did. I asked a Nebraska assistant coach as they left the field celebrating on Saturday what he thought the story of the game was. He pointed up to the scoreboard and says, those 13 penalties, you know how many drives we kept going because of those penalties? So, you know, Oregon got in its own way there. You can talk about officiating all you want, but, uh, you know, this is, this is football. You're going to have uh, penalties both ways. You're going to have officials and a Pac-12 crew out there uh, that's going to miss calls and make calls. You have to overcome that. You have to give yourself a chance to win, and the Ducks didn't do that. So those two things combined, the PATs, the penalties, and the sloppiness, I think were enough to make us start wondering and talking about Mark Helfrich. Is this the kind of game that costs him his job? No, absolutely not. But when coaches are eventually fired a couple of years down the road, we often look back to games just like this and we go, that game was a pivotal game in his era and in his in sort of the slide of the program. So keep an eye on that as Oregon continues this season. If they continue to be undisciplined, if they continue to, to stumble and trip over themselves, if they, if they have trouble recruiting, if the defense doesn't improve, I do think we'll look back at this Nebraska game and we'll say that was a pivotal moment for Mark Helfrich. He came out uh, on Sunday night and said, this is 100% on me. And to that I want to go, of course it's 100% on you. You're the head football coach at Oregon. And you're making $3.5 million a year. This is on you. We all know that. I want to quit hearing that. And I want to, hear, I want to see a program on the field that doesn't look like a cheap knockoff of what Oregon used to be. And that's kind of what I feel like where the Ducks are right now. They're trying to be what they once were. And I don't know if you've ever been to the Silk Market in Beijing. I don't know if you ever uh, walked a street in New York and seen somebody selling a knockoff purse on the street corner. I feel like the Oregon Ducks football program right now is a cheap knockoff of the Chip Kelly Ducks program. I think they're trying to play fast, but they get to the line of scrimmage and stand there. I think they're trying to be disciplined and innovative, but they're not. And I think they're trying to run the swinging gate and be cute at times, and it's blowing up in their face a little bit. So I, I would like to see that stop, and I think if it doesn't, I think Oregon's going to struggle on a week-to-week -week basis in the Pac-12 this season, so keep an eye on that. Also, you know, Dakota Prukop, I asked the question entering the game, 
Um, is this guy going to be have a big game in him? Is he is he a good enough player to carry Oregon to a win, especially if they don't have Royce Freeman? What we found out, unfortunately, after the second series, and we watched Dakota Pruk up. I'll say, running the football, I thought he gave Oregon a dimension that it really lacked last season under Vernon Adams. I thought he attacked the defense. I thought he put pressure on Nebraska. And I thought that's when Oregon was really humming, when Dakota Prukop was putting the ball down on the read option and giving them another dimension. I thought he struggled, though, throwing the football. Obviously, he missed a couple of wide-open throws that should have been touchdowns. Uh, there were a couple times after he got sacked that I thought he was a little hurried in the pocket. The pressure wasn't there, but he felt it, got out of the pocket. And certainly, I think this is a game he's going to look back on when he watches film. He's going to kick himself. Um, Oregon, Nebraska, I don't think either one of those teams is a great football team. But obviously, Nebraska is the kind of team that knows how to finish a game. Mark Helfrich, again, now after losing this game, they trailed entering the fourth quarter by two points. He's now 0-7 in games that he trails at the end of the third quarter. He's never won from behind in the fourth quarter. I'm still looking for that dimension from the Ducks coach, and I'm looking for this program to lace itself up and get itself back together. On the Oregon State front, you've got Gary Anderson, who has some eyeballs on him all of a sudden. He's talked about being tougher. He's talked about being a program that's going to line up and be stronger and more physical. And Oregon State looked all of those things, albeit against Idaho State last weekend. The big takeaway from the Beavers' victory over Idaho State is that it was a victory. For the first time in 10 games, they won. Gary Anderson let his team celebrate. It was a 37-7 win. That's great. It's Idaho State. You kicked their teeth in. Now, people are going to be watching the Beavers and wondering, can they do it now against Boise State? a program that is physical, a program that has proof of performance, and here's Gary Anderson moving forward trying to get this program in position to now win two straight. We're all watching you, Beavers. Let's see what you do against a brand name and a program that doesn't have to talk about being strong and tough. It really is strong and tough. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club is you do not Talk about Fight Club. Boise State, Oregon State is going to be a street fight, and I'm curious to see how the Beavers respond. My biggest takeaway from Portland State's game at Washington really comes on the Washington side. Keep in mind, Washington paid Portland State $525,000 to take this game. So Bruce Barnum, happy to have the check, happy to have the payday, but I thought it was really interesting after the game what he was asked about. Oregon's 2010 national championship contending team that played Auburn, uh, to compare that team to this year's Washington team. One of the Washington reporters, beat reporters, asked him that. I thought that was a really interesting question and way premature. Barnum, to his credit, sidestepped it, talked a lot about Oregon's offense, talked about this Washington defense. But let's slow the roll on talking about Washington as a national championship contender until we actually see them play somebody. They've played the weakest non-conference schedule in the Pac-12. They now have consecutive conference games against Arizona, against Stanford on a short week, and Oregon. If they get through this stretch 6-0, we can start talking about Washington. Is it as good as the 2010 Ducks team or where do they rank? That's fine. But it's way too early to start talking about that. I have two game programs from the Oregon-Nebraska game. I will give them away, and here's how you win them. First of all, subscribe to this channel. Second of all, comment below and tell me what you think Oregon's final regular season record is this year. How many games do they win? How many games do they lose? And there are 12 regular season games. All right, appreciate you watching uh, this channel. Make sure you're subscribed if you want more of these videos, and I will see you next week.